Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyid al-Awari wa al-Akhirin. Let's pick up the fourth line now of the incredible poem that we're reading, Aqidut uh, al-Awam. And I want you to understand something that up until this point, all the Sheikh is doing is going through the introduction. The actual book hasn't started. And this is the last line of the introduction. And he says, Wa adihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'a sabira deen al-haqqi ghayra mubtadi'a. Uh, and what he says is, in this this wow right here, you see it, and over here I translated it as and, um, is actually called wow al atf. Atf. And that means a conjunction. In Arabi, atf. And, and and what that means is that it is related, of course, to the sentence that came before it. So peace and blessings upon the Prophet wa alihi and peace and blessings be upon the family of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa sahbihi his companions wa man tabi' and whoever follows the truth now the the family of the prophet are his wife his children Bani uh, Abdul Muttalib and Bani Hashim according to the majority of the ulama and to love them and to honor them and to respect them is from one of the pillars of Iman. That's why it's mentioned in the books of mainstream theology, right? Well, sahbihi are the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And the word sahab actually means to rub together, like to the point that we, we our dirt touches each other. Like we mix dirt. We used to say in the 90s, yo, that's my dirty, right? Kind of the same way, right? So sahbihi are companions, and it's whoever saw the Prophet ﷺ and believed in the Prophet when they saw him, meaning they were Muslim, and died as a Muslim. And that's why Imam Suyuti says that the greatest Sahabi is Sayyidina Isa because on the night of Isra Mi'raj, he saw the Prophet, he believed in the Prophet, Sayyidina Isa was alive, and Jesus will come back and die as a Muslim, subhanAllah. Waman tabi' and whoever follows, right? Sabila deen al haqi the way of the true religion, ghayra mubtadi' And let's talk about that word for a minute. It's right here, you can see it. The big controversy because the word mubtada is from the word ibtada, and that word, of course, is the word which leads to bid'a, right? And we see that there are a lot of people out there claiming that everything is bid'a, and there are other people out there that say nothing is bid'a, and we need to be balanced, right? But the reason the Sheikh put mubtada in this line is if to say that bid'a can only happen in the fundamentals. The usul of the religion. And not only the usul, the agreed upon usul. Like prayer, right? Like hajj, like tawheed. Those are fundamental things, right? The Quran being sacred. But where aqidah, uh, where bid'ah doesn't happen, and where most Muslims tend to uh, misappropriate uh, its usage, are in issues of fiqh. Right, because when we hear the word fiqh, the word fiqh means ishtihad. And ishtihad means that the mind was involved, that scholarship was involved. There was an engagement in a text or the absence of a text. And that's why Imam al Haramain says that fiqh is synonymous with differences. When we entered Al Azhar, we were told Al Fiqh min Babi Dhunun, meaning that fiqh is going to, to really engage a lot of different opinions and ideas. But unfortunately, we see the untrained uh, and perhaps the, the immature, you know, turning everything under the sun into bid'ah, which is not bid'ah. For example, they will say that, you know, um, uh, can you put your hands on your chest or not? Well, that's a bid'ah. That's not bid'ah. Can you pray 20 or 8 rakat tarawih? That doesn't fall under bid'ah. Right, what falls under bid'ah are issues related to the fundamentals of religion, not the issues of legitimate scholarly discourse. It's very important for you when you engage your community to be someone who brings about unity, not disunity. The second thing is that for someone to be a mubtada, it means they have to do it on purpose. And that's why he uses that form, because that form in Arabic, mubtada, is from if ta'ala. If ta ala. And, and, and that form actually implies that the person knowingly and purposefully did something. 
But if someone falls into bid'ah on accident, we don't go around and label them innovators. So let's quickly go over bid'ah. The word bid'ah is from the word bada'a. And bada'a means to do something that has no precedent, to bring something from nothing. So when we, uh, Allah, for example, his name is al badia That's an ayin at the end over there. You can't see it. al badia right? Because Allah brings things from nothing. He creates from nothing. So when something is a bid'ah in religion, that means la asla la. It has no text or no action of the Sahaba to support it or the Salaf. That's the first thing. Number two is, it means that it fell in the issues of the fundamentals that I talked about earlier, not in the issues of fiqh and fatwa. In the issues of fiqh and fa fatwa, mawlid, not to do mawlid, all of those things fall under legitimate scholarly discussion, right? The third thing is that the scholars differed over the conceptualization of bid'ah. Some said every innovation in the religion is forbidden, and that is the minority of scholars. The majority who followed Imam al-Shafi'i said that bid'ah is divided into madhmuma and mahmuda, commendable and disliked. We'll talk about that insha'Allah ta'ala in the future. But what I want you to remember now is that issues of legitimate scholarly difference do not fall under the term Bidah. Now let's repeat this last line a few times in the introduction before we start the text. The Shaykh he says, Wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi' sabida deen al haqi ghayra mubtadi'. There's something else I want you to pay attention to really quickly, and that is the word tabi'. We have taqlid in Islam. Taqlid. Oh, this pen's give me the blues. We have taqlid. And the word taqlid means to follow someone without knowing why. Right? And there's times when that's an obligation. We'll talk about that in the future. The other word we have is 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 really important. Um is it it back. And the word, that's nine right there. The word itba' means to follow someone with evidences, to know why you're following them. So the sheikh is saying that the most honorable person is the one who knows why they follow the prophet, knows why they follow his family, know why, knows why they follow his companions, right? Knows why they do what they do, as if to say the importance of knowledge, right? Allah says, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ الدَّرَجَاتِ Allah will raise the people of knowledge. So in this last line, we took the importance of sending peace and blessings upon the Prophet's family, his companions, learning and acquiring religious literacy. And we also talked about briefly the idea of bid'ah, being careful of people who misuse the concept. Barakallahu feekum. This completes the introduction of the poem. The next chapter, inshallah, that will start, will begin a discussion about God, the intellect, and how the intellect and the sacred work together. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم